Hey guys, it's me the Tactical Brit, and today we're taking a deep dive at Bloodhound on Apex Legends. Now, I've recently gotten to grips and tried to get in-depth with this character, and today I think I can give you a pretty comprehensive guide of what this guy is all about, what you should be doing in terms of abilities, what you should be looking out for, things like pro tips, as well as what kind of loadouts you potentially want to run with a character like Bloodhound. Now, in this video today, we're going to go through each ability one by one, talk about combinations and playstyles, and I'll give you guys a rough idea of what I believe to be the best loadout for this player. So let's kick it off with the passive ability. Now, Bloodhound has a really interesting passive ability that's arguably one of the most useful in any given battle royale environment. Now, the tracker ability will actually let you know what enemies have been doing in your proximity. For example, You'll be able to tell if somebody has vaulted something. You'll be able to tell if someone's been bleeding out in the area. You'll be able to see if they've opened a canister or more or less anything in between. The tracker ability also gives you a significant sign as well that you need to look out for. Now, when it's bright red, that means that that proximity device or proximity reading has been incredibly recent. It means that a player has used something or vaulted or bled out recently within the last sort of about 10 seconds or so, and you should be immediately aware of danger in your proximity. Proximity. And you'll actually notice as well that it will actually give you a time when you look at the tracker. It'll say roughly 10 seconds ago, and that time will continue to increase. And as it increases, the track becomes gray. And once it becomes gray, it means that there's somebody who was there has now moved on potentially to a nearby location. Now, this passive ability is something that you have to keep a really good eye out for. And the reason for this is because Battle Royale games give you more or less a good idea of how to approximate where enemies are. Now, you know, for example, if there's a named location nearby and you've seen containers being opened on the way to that named location, you can probably guess that there's going to be enemies there. Similarly, you know that, for example, if there's lots of bleed out signatures in the area and lots of people have clearly died in the region, then a squad nearby potentially could be depleted. They may have less squad mates. They may be looking, for example, for a spawn beacon to bring players back into the game. And more importantly, if they have wiped out an enemy squad, they've probably got lots of good loot that you guys can get your hands on. And finally, and most importantly in my opinion, is that this gives you a really good read on final zones. If you see with the tracker ability that somebody has been in your proximity, you'll be able to know roughly within the final zone where that could be. And um, for example, if you're heading into a final zone yourself, you will be able to see if somebody has used the same pathway or same route into that objective area that you have. And that means that you can have, again, a really educated guess as to where they may be. Especially in terms of looking at things like buildings and small compounds in the final zone, here Bloodhound effectively has an ongoing advantage. This links in very heavily with Bloodhound's playstyle. You are effectively looking for enemy players, you're looking for what they're doing, and with that you really need to be ready to get up close and personal with them, and be very aggressive as a player. Bloodhound is certainly not a sit back and relax kind of character, it's somebody who tracks down players, decimates them, and steals their loot. And it's why it's a very aggressive playstyle, but when done correctly, very effective, because you will always have a more educated guess and a better approximation of the enemies in your area than most other people. Moving on to the ability that he activates, the Eye of the Allfather. This is a tactical ability that effectively amplifies your tracking passive ability. Now this briefly will reveal hidden enemies, traps, and clues throughout the entirety of structures in front of you. Enemies, of course, will have a red silhouette, which is incredibly helpful. Um, think kind of like the golden target finder site. It will give you an enemy outline, and once you have that, it's a lot easier to shoot at something that's bright red in front of you than it is to shoot at something which blends into the background. Now, not only this, but you also have the ability to reveal traps, which is important when you have sort of Nox gas laying around, and other clues as well. This is a sort of hot way and quick way of checking the entire structures and regions around you and giving yourself a bit of peace of mind. Like, if you're going into an area to loot, it's not always as simple as looking for open doors, open canisters, and stuff like that. You know, you may very well have an enemy squad right next to you that doesn't open any canisters or hasn't opened any doors, and and there may be a little bit of distance between you. And by activating the Eye of the Allfather, you'll be able to see a little bit further and see what they've been up to. And this is especially helpful at the start of the game when you're trying to hunt down enemy players who sort of landed in the same area as you, but sort of evaded what you're looking for. 
And the tracking ability, as well as the eye of the Allfather, reveals everything from footsteps, to doors open, to enemies being hurt or killed, items, weapon pickups, emptied magazines, vaulting over obstacles, landings, activation of Gibraltar's dome protection, zipline usage, and portals from Wraith's dimensional drift. And with the activation of the Eye of the Allfather, you should be able to see all of these things, including landings especially, which is quite important at the start of the game, within a better proximity to give you an understanding of what's going on. Of course, the tracker is pretty good, but this is a very subtle passive ability. The Eye of the Allfather does amplify things, and to some degree it will actually clutter your screen a little bit if you've had a lot going on around you. But again, the more of these indicators you've seen, the better the approximation. If you see a crap ton of bleeds outs, if you see lots of enemies and items that have been used in expended magazines, you'll be able to see naturally that you've had maybe one, two, or even three squads within your region. And the more tags and trackers that you see around you with the Eye of the Allfather, as well as the passive ability, the better the educated guess, which is really what this character is all about. And the better you'll be able to understand that there may be multiple enemies in the area, they may have headed in this direction. If you see some body boxes, you'll say, hey, they wiped out that squad, they've kept on moving, and you'll be able to get a really good understanding that you could potentially be coming up behind an enemy squad, or potentially right on top of an enemy squad, which is always great tactical information that you want to use. And finally, this all comes together with his ultimate ability, the Beast of the Hunt, and this turns all three abilities into one big combination. The passive tracking ability will give you a rough idea of where things are going. The Eye of the Allfather, when activated, will give you a more advanced understanding of what's happening in your region. And the Beast of the Hunt, well that's when you go in and make the kill. The Beast of the Hunt not only outlines enemy players in a bright red color and turns the rest of the game black and white, but it also allows you to move faster as well. This is literally the Beast of the Hunt. You are going in for the kill whenever you activate this ability. Now this ability shouldn't really be used in an evasive sense. The idea here is that you're going to use Tracker and Eye of the Allfather to understand or get in and behind a squad or kind of get into the mix if you see two squads fighting. And when you activate Beast of the Hunt, you've got a really huge advantage here. Like we said earlier, when you have this activated, you have the outline and silhouette of red players, and you'll be able to really easily hone in shots like you would with a golden optic. It's effectively an advanced threat detector site that will let you see enemies at ranges in red silhouettes and then allow you to counteract them by just being able to spray and pray. It's really good because whenever your weapon recoils or has muzzle flash, you'll be able to really quickly reassign where you're going and compensate for the recoil or muzzle flash because you have this big bright red silhouette. And alongside all of this, you move quickly. I can't tell you how many times I've activated Beast of the Hunt, sprinted into where I know enemy players are because of the other abilities and just absolutely wrecked face you know you have the option here to really go aggro as humanly possible and this feeds into what i'm finally going to talk about here and this is play styles and of course weaponry choices now as far as i'm concerned you really don't want to be using any kind of long range weaponry with bloodhound bloodhound is a very medium to close range apex legend it's the kind of person that when you activate the beast of the hunt and you use your passive and activation abilities that you have to be ready for a fight you have to be ready to get into the mix at any given point you're effectively the beacon for the rest of your teammates in a squad. You can walk into an area and have a much more advanced understanding of anybody else around you because you have these abilities. And because of that, you'll be able to hunt down enemies very quickly. Now, I personally recommend the Spitfire LMG or a turbocharged devotion should you be lucky enough to find one of the hop-ups for it. But ultimately, the Spitfire LMG, once you start smacking in some extended magazines in there, can really do damage at close ranges. It's arguably one of the best medium to close range weapons in my opinion and most people would recommend it but in general it really suits the bloodhound's behavior because especially on beast of the hunt you move incredibly quickly and if you've got a 60 round magazine with like a purple mag on the spitfire attachment register then you have the option here to really shred potentially two to three players with a single mag you'll be able to wipe out purple shields down somebody and wipe out another purple shield and down somebody without even having to reload and alongside all of this because you're moving more quickly and an extended magazine on the Spitfire or any likewise weapon like a Devotion will allow you that extra room for error. If you do miss your shots by some, you know, unlikely cause because you haven't got the red silhouette seen properly or just because you're moving too quickly, that's not an issue because you have more room for error with the extended mags. 
Now alongside this playstyle that is very rushing, it is very aggressive, and it uses all of these abilities, you also want something that balances you out. Now most Battle Royale players will go for something that is close range like a shotgun, and something that is medium to long range like some kind of rifle, or potentially even an LMG if you want to try and use it in that dynamic. And in my opinion, Bloodhound doesn't really fit that kind of category. I would use something medium range and something shredding at close range. And typically, I use a Hemlock with this. Now, the Spitfire and Hemlock combo I find has worked incredibly well with this character, because if you get into that medium range engagement, you have the ability to really shred down shields with a Hemlock. It's incredibly accurate and precise, and it has the magazine capacity once you start getting some of the upgrades on it to really do damage and get rid of those shields and do the kind of output you'd expect it to do. And then naturally, if you do happen to activate Beast of the Hunt, you have the ability to rush in very quickly with the Spitfire, or even something like a Peacekeeper would work very well as well. And I really think this is the kind of mantra here. You want a medium range and a close range to medium range weapon to be a dynamic player. At no point do you want to limit Bloodhound to being this super super CQB kind of guy that's just simply not going to work for any Battle Royale character in Apex Legends. But at the same time, you know, your abilities do cater towards a playstyle, which is much more closer and in the mix than other characters will be. Other characters are going to be far away. They will have better evasive abilities. They will have, you know, the kind of abilities that allow them to get in and out of situations or, you know, just in general brute force their way through situations. You as Bloodhound have a capacity to be aggressive and a capacity to be educated about the decisions and engagements that you're making here. So that's ultimately it, really. I'd say if you can find yourself something along lines the sort of medium to close range loadout that's been upgraded, of course you're going to want lots of shields with a character like this guy who gets really close range, and use your tracking and Eye of the Allfather abilities to make educated approximations of your enemies, then Bloodhound is really the character for you, and it's very easy to be one of the most dominant players in the field if you can use this character well. So troops, that's about it from me today in the Tactical Brim. As always, if you've enjoyed this guy, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share it with any of your friends who are planning to look at Bloodhound in Apex Legends, or if you'll know somebody who's looking for a change of scenery as to what legend they're using. As always, folks, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you again soon in another video.